Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing another crime series video, and this one is going to be about the Petit family. This case takes place in Cheshire, Connecticut, and involves the family, uh, Jennifer Hawk Petit, who is the mother, the father, Dr. William Petit. Then they have two daughters. The oldest is named Haley, and the youngest is named Michaela. This story really starts on July 22nd, 2007. Um, the mom, Jennifer, and the daughter, Michaela, they are at the Cheshire Stop and Shop and they're just getting groceries while, unbeknownst to them, they are being followed. The man they are being followed by is named Joshua Komisarjewski. He says that he had spotted them in the grocery store and that they had looked nice. And so he had pointed them out as potential robbery victims. And I'm assuming because they probably looked of maybe an upper class kind of look, that that is why he targeted them. After the mother and daughter had finished their shopping trip, he followed them home just to see where they lived. And then he rung up his accomplice, Stephen Hayes, to set up the robbery. So there was some texting in between the two and I'll read that to you guys right now. I have to read it from my phone because I can't remember all of this. So Stephen Hayes sends a text to Joshua and he says he's chomping at the bit to get started, needs a margarita soon. And then he says, we still on? And then Joshua replies, yes. Then Hayes, his next text is soon, question mark. And then Joshua replies, I'm putting the kid to bed. Hold your horses. And then Hayes wrote, dude, the horses want to get loose. So I believe that this shows that they had some kind of pre-arrangement or agreement and that they have been planning a robbery for a while. Both of these men have extensive criminal history. And with uh, Joshua, he actually had like rape, uh, theft, robberies, you know, crimes he honestly, honestly, he should have been in jail for, but he had a ton, a ton of like criminal records, things on his records and same thing with Stephen Hayes. So they are experienced and they've been playing this robbery. Just want to clear that up. Like these aren't just like random guys. These are people who target people, you know, like the Petit family. So on the early morning of June 23rd, they decided to carry out this robbery. When they first arrived at the Petit home, they had gone around the back and they had seen the father. He was sleeping outside, not outside, he was sleeping in like a clo enclosed porch area basically. And they basically woke him up with a bat. They then tied the father up and brought him to the basement where the father had stayed for the majority of the robbery. The children and the mother were then found. The mother was tied up in her room and then the children were tied up in their rooms. They spent the next seven hours stealing things from the home, you know, taking things, but they were unhappy with what they got. And so they had found a checkbook which get, showed them the available balance that was in their account. And so basically their next plan was to force Jennifer to get money out of the account for them. Before they did that, Hayes went to the gas station and got two gallons of gasoline and then he went back and picked up Jennifer. And I want to point that out because that's very important because that shows that they planned to kill these people. I don't think they got gasoline for a bonfire so I'm thinking that they had planned to set the house on fire with the people inside of it to get rid of any and all evidence because fire, that's what fire does. It, destroys everything. It'll get rid of all the evidence. I'm sure their handprints are probably everywhere. And so their train of thought was probably to get rid of the evidence and kill everyone inside the house. Anyway, they went to the bank and there's actually footage. If I can't get it in this video, I'm going to link it down below. But there's footage of Jennifer going into the bank. She is talking to the teller and apparently from what the teller says, she told the, Jennifer told the teller that she was being robbed, so she notified someone. The manager comes out, you know, they're talking, telling her of the situation, but Jennifer is saying that, you know, they're nice, like the the robbers are nice. And so I think maybe she didn't know, or at the time they were being nice, I guess, but I, I think maybe they had threatened her or something because I can't imagine being like, oh, these people who are robbing me are nice. Like, no. So I don't know if she was doing that just to kind of like, maybe they threatened her and she was like afraid to say anything, but she was still like doing it. I don't know how it, I don't know. But I feel like 
if I was her, I would not even, I mean, her family was at home, but I think she would have had more luck just, you know, alerting them and trying to stay in the bank for as long as possible, you know, but that's what she did. She just told them that she was being robbed, that they were being nice, and she thinks they all they want is the money, and she leaves and goes back with Stephen Hayes. I also want to stop here and clarify that the bank teller, like the manager, whoever, they call the police. So at this point, 911 knows what's going on, like the police know what's going on. And so they end up setting up a perimeter around the house where they live, but they don't do anything. They don't even let the assailants really know that they're there. They wait like 30 minutes and in that time, just a bunch of horrific things happen. So I believe that Joshua ends up sexually assaulting the 11 year old and I think this happens while the mother is gone at the bank with uh, Stephen Hayes. So he ends up sexually assaulting the 11 year old girl and he takes pictures of it on his phone. And so that's evidence right there. Like he has pictures of the assault on his phone. And then once Hayes gets back with the mother, you know, Joshua is probably like, okay, man, like I did this now kind of like even up the score, like you got to do the same thing. So Hayes ends up raping the mother in the living room. And in a book that the father later writes, he says that he could hear this all happening, or at least the, of the mother, he could hear like the thump thump of her being raped. So while the mother is being raped, uh, Joshua, he enters the room and he is like, the father has escaped, so the father was able to get out of his binds. He's able to escape, and he is out of the basement. He's at a neighbor's, you know, and they, the neighbors said that they were, that he was so badly beaten that they were almost unable to rec recognize him. And I do have pictures of the father, and I'll show you guys those. But that he, he was beaten so badly they were unable to, you know, even recognize him. So... With the knowledge that the father is escaped and he's gone, Hayes starts to strangle the mother and he kills her. And then they basically begin to douse the gasoline that they had gotten a few hours earlier all over the house. So they put the gasoline on the mother. They The kids are still alive. They throw gasoline on the kids. They started a fire and they fled the scene in the family's car. They were spotted by police immediately because, I mean, the police already knew of the situation. So they were spotted by police immediately. Then they had a chase for like literally a block and they were arrested right then and there on the spot. But it was already too late and the fire that they had started had already pretty much started to engulf the house. So basically what happened is that the mother, well, she died they found out that she had died before the fire. She hadn't breathed in any suit or any uh, of the smoke from the fire, but the children were both alive and they died of smoke inhalation. Um, they did have, clearly they're gonna have severe burns and they believe that for a good portion of that, they could, the fire might've been burning the children while they were still alive. but at the very most, I mean, the smoke inhalation really is what killed them, but they could have been alive and that the fire had gotten very close to them. So, you know, that heat was very close to them while they were still alive and dying of smoke inhalation, which is honestly one of the worst ways to imagine to die, especially those innocent kids. Like they, they didn't deserve that. And so basically, you know, I mean, it's not a happy ending, but the perpetrators are caught. So basically, Josh and Steven, they both kind of blamed each other. They go back and forth, but now they are both in prison. They both, you know, like, they're both gotten the sentences they deserve, pretty much. Both of the perpetrators, they have been taken off death row, unfortunately. But, you know, they're still both locked up to this day. Thankfully, like, they're not able to hurt anyone else but I feel like so much of this case could have been prevented the police knew they were there during the time that basically the mother and the daughter were being raped they could have 
stopped before the entire family pretty much was murdered. The only person who survived is the dad and he's remarried. He's had another child. I mean, he's the only one who survived and he's living his life, but I, I just couldn't imagine losing my entire family and knowing that something could have been done. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope you guys found it interesting. Comment down below if you think that this entire thing kind of sucked and that something could have been done because that's what I think. And that's all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed my video once again and thank you so much for watching. Bye.